You've seen them on TV and in the movies, but now we are one step closer to the reality of flying cars. Just this week, San Mateo-based company Aleph Aeronautics announced that the Federal Aviation Administration has approved its Model A flying car, making it the first car approved for use of this nature in the U.S. Joining me now to talk about this groundbreaking development is the CEO of Aleph, Jim Duchovny. Thank you so much for being here, Jim. Thank you, Karina. Thank you so much. First, can you talk about why you wanted to build not only an electric car, but an electric flying car, a concept many of us have seen in the movie Back to the Future? That actually was one of the inspirations. So we have four founders, uh, Konstantin Kisle, Oleg Petrov, Pavel Markin, and myself. Um, for me personally, it got from my father, uh, Leonid Dukovny. He was a famous songwriter. So he loved science fiction. At the same time, he was an engineer. He built parts of the um, Soviet spaceships. Um, that was my inspiration. I loved science fiction and moreover, turning science fiction into reality. And you're absolutely correct. Back to the Future was one of the uh, one of the main inspirations. Mm. The interesting story behind that, and just very, it's a coincidence. We started the company in about uh, fall of 2015, in about October. Coincidentally, this is when they travel to and back to the future. Wow. Okay. So maybe it's meant to be and it's all going to work out. You're getting that FAA approval. Uh, I have so many questions for you about how all this works. So let's start with this simple one. How does someone learn how to drive or fly a car like this? Do you call it flying or driving? Are you a pilot? Are you a driver? <laughs> That's a good question. Before we jump into that, just want to clarify. So we've got a limited FAA approval, right? A special air washing certificate. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean tomorrow in San Francisco, you're going to see this on the street. It's very limited in location and it's very limited in purposes yet. And also we're the first traditional car. There were cars before, right? Since Henry Ford, Terra Fugia, Paul Miller, a lot of people worked on those cars. Mm -hmm. uh, this is more a traditional car in the traditional sense, how it looks like, how it parks like, how it drives like. Right, it's traditionally and obviously the first uh, electric cars. Now, getting back to your question. So, yes, it looks exactly like a car. It's like chassis with a regular EV. And we can put some driver, video up so to... people can see what you're talking about. So while you're describing it and how someone might drive it, um, we'll show you some video. Um, but go ahead. You were talking about how someone would be piloting it or driving it. Perfect. So the person would be driving it. So it has three modes. Uh, driving mode, you're driving, you're a driver. Then the vertical takeoff mode, like a rotorcraft mode, right? So in this case, we're still going to call you a driver, but you're in right. And you can fly forward. For, to efficiently fly forward, there is a reason we did not have flying cars for 100 years. And the main reason is the energy efficiency. So what we did, you need like huge wings, you need like a airflow. So we're turning the car on the side. What it means is that your driver's side becomes the top and your uh, passenger side becomes the bottom. Now you have two wings. You don't have to do that only if you want to go somewhere far and you need to save your energy, right? Because it's an uh, electric car. You're more than welcome to drive and just fly without transition also. But for a long, um, long drive or long flight, you probably want to get into the biplane mode. And this is how you fly, and this is exactly what you're showing right now. And yeah, we're um, showing some video of that. Um, there's a video that we just aired, and hopefully we can show again, of lots of these cars flying over the Bay Bridge right there. I mean, to me, this seems unfathomable. Like, could this really happen? And then I'm looking, are there lanes like the traditional lanes we see on a roadway in the sky? Yes, it's fact, it's called high swing in the sky, but what you see is a simulation, right? Right. So, yes, uh, to answer the question, yes, of course, it's possible. Yes, FAA and NASA is working on this. They're doing a really good job. They're completely overwhelmed with everything. So, given what the FAA has like to go through right now is everything they have to go with, the fact that they're paying attention to us and actually moving it along is actually absolutely great. That being said, no tomorrow, you're not going to see that simulation in mm -hmm. San Francisco above the Bay Bridge. The highways in the sky has a huge advantage over highways in the bottom. So the problem we're trying to solve, obviously, the main problem is traffic, right? Everybody got stuck on 101, on 92, um, anywhere in San Francisco in 5 p.m., right? And the main problem is you're constrained by the road. You have a road, 
and this is your main cons physical constraint. And to build an extra lane of the road, you know how long it takes mm -hmm. and how much of taxpayer money it costs. So idea is to get it up in the air. In the air, your highway can extend and contract as much as it needs to, and it can do it in two directions. Hence, you can accommodate much more, much more safely. We have a video of that. It's a flipped over semi. We got this from your website, and here is the car. It pulls up, and it's like, oh, you know what? I don't want to be behind this traffic right here. Oh, I'll just fly over it. Do you really envision it being able to do something like that in the future? Right. So this is not the future. This is actually a past. Uh, yes, we did that in tests. We actually did pretty something very similar to what you see in the simulation here. Huh. Um, since the, again, limited FAA approval just came several weeks ago, like uh, about three weeks ago, we just had a limited uh, amount of flight tests, which we did, and we're trying to record them in the future. We're trying to do a public demo very soon for that. But yes, in fact, we should see something very similar to this. Yes, we actually did it in real life. Okay, um, where are you doing these, uh, you know, safety tests and where are you testing this car out right now? Um, and what are some of the safety concerns or issues that you might have run into so far? This is exactly why we got the certification. So because so FAA can limit uh, where and how and what we do. We do it in a secret location, away from people, away from structures. Uh, making sure it's very safe, it's for uh, the right purposes. It's, again, it's as safe as possible as you can get it. Again, the design of the vehicle itself is supposed to be much safer than your traditional airplane and helicopter, and in fact, a car in some cases. Okay, so I'm um, sure there so are, uh, real quick, a lot of misconceptions about this car. What are some of the most common things that you see out there? You're like, no, it's not gonna work like this, but none of us have ever been in a flying car, right? So we don't know. What are the biggest misconceptions that you just wanna clear out right now? Sure, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> the um, biggest ones. <laughs> they all big. So first of all, no, the person does not, if you need to go in a biplane mode, no, the person does not rotate. The person is always uh, 90 degrees. Okay. Um, you will not need extended pilot skills in the long run. You may need the short run. All like right, so let's talk about reality. Um, now that you've received this, um, you know, from the Federal Aviation Administration, what happens next? All right, so what happens next is a lot more testing. Um, we've done about four years of special testing. Now we can do much uh, bigger testing, exhibitions, um, and hopefully we're gonna get closer to bringing the car, to delivering it to the first consumer. Okay, it's $300,000 yeah. by the way, and um, if I wanted to hop in one of these cars, what year do you envision me testing it out and um, doing that story? Right, so with the $300,000. So first of all, um, you can actually put down the deposit of 150 or 1,500, depends on the queue um, right now. And yes, uh, by the time it's gonna get to deliver the price tag as of today is 300, but from the beginning, and this is one of our biggest constraints, but I really hope we're not ever gonna move from it. We're trying to make it a car for everybody trying to make it affordable and we're trying to make sure that everybody can use it and we're trying to get it eventually to the price tag of 35k oh. now this is this is hard because you have to have really good automation and manufacturing and you have to have volume okay and everybody we're running... started with yeah, ahead, and Jim, i'm so sorry we're running out of time but uh real quick uh what year i i just like i'm gonna put it in my calendar you're thinking you're you're if you could have it you know sure. five years from now Completely, not completely, shot in the dark estimate, end of 2025, but don't hold me to it. A lot of things can go faster or slow. Okay. All right, Jim, thank you so much for your time, and good luck to you. We'll be watching closely. Keep us updated. Thank you, Karin.